Welcome to everyone. My name is Beata Lubinska and in today's video I would like to tell you uh, a bit more about my book which has been published last year uh, in 2021 which is fully dedicated to the interesting topic which is interest rate risk in the banking book uh, a best practice guide to management and hedging this is the title of the book so the reason why i'm going to um, to tell you a bit more uh, regarding the book on this channel is because we are living quite unprecedented uh, times and what happened last week was the testimony on what market can do and how important interest rate risk the robust practice around interest rate risk is and uh, it clearly shows that if you don't have the proper framework in the bank around this hot topic around this risk then uh, you can really um, you know be out of the market as i say as i've seen many banks had struggle, uh, different problems regarding the fixed rate products because they were not able to hedge it or because they uh, didn't have the robust hedging strategy in place. Especially I'm referring to the, uh, to the pipeline hedging. Uh, the pipeline hedging, in my view, uh, which is the, one of the most important hedging programs in the bank, uh, deserves its own its own session, separate session. And what I'm going to organize, I'm going to uh, organize webinar, which I will share with you details in in the next video uh, on the topic. And I also will introduce the the topic of pipeline hedging in the next video. But um, because it's so important and because what we have seen last week, uh, especially in, in UK, was uh, again the, um, the proof how important was and is to get the, um, the pipeline hedging program in place. Um, I don't want to, expand to, to spend too much time uh, talking about pipeline hedging program because it will be the topic, as I mentioned, of the separate webinar. Today, the objective is to uh, anticipate to you and share with you some contents of the book, of the book which I wrote uh, because I wanted to share with you the practical aspects of management of the interest rate risk. Indeed, the book is written by uh, someone uh, from Treasury. So you can see the Treasury eyes there. So someone who is in the front office, uh, someone who is managing this risk on the daily basis and starts its day uh, uh, looking, uh, his her day, looking at IRBB through the Treasury length. So basically, um, the book is divided in, um, in seven chapters, plus has two appendix, appendix one, appendix two. And what each chapter, I would like to slightly introduce the chapters to you. So the first chapter is uh, saying uh, regulatory, the regulatory oversight and regulatory landscape, setting up the regulatory landscape for IRBB. Uh, showing what has changed recently uh, is also going through the ECB stress test, which has been uh, which has been um, done exercise, which has been done by uh, uh, ECB in 2017. Then also it explores the different uh, interest rate shocks, different uh, uh, magnitude of the shock, different shapes of the curve and uh, subcategories of interest rate risk in particular is working uh, through the four IRBB uh, subcategories which is uh, repricing risk which is basis risk uh, option risk and yield risk so each subcategory is described in detail and supported by practical examples the second chapter 
is focused on the how to identify and measure interest rate risk in the banking book because we know that there are different techniques there are different models we have the static models uh, which has its own characteristic and also we have the dynamic models and there is clear line between uh, those two and we need to be able to distinguish what is static model, what is dynamic, what are limits of the static model uh, for IRBB and what are uh, advantage or disadvantage and disadvantage of the dynamic modeling, because obviously uh, they are quite more complex. Um, we have also described the duration gap analysis, the credit spread risk in the banking book, and um, time bucket sensitivity. Uh, I try to support this chapter as much as possible with the practical example. So I showed the uh, risk metrics of one bank, uh, illustrative bank, where I uh, designed or set up the metrics. I show you the metrics and in the book and I wanted to ask you uh, is the bank well managed from the IRBB perspective when you go through the book you will see I describe what are my thoughts on the positioning of this bank in terms of the NII sensitivity and EVE and uh, time bucket sensitivity and automatic options because uh, this was the case when I was going through the nonlinear hedging hedges instru hedging instruments like uh, floors, caps and swaptions. Uh, the chapter three is interesting because it shows in detail what are the hedging strategies, uh, describes the forward starting swaps, describes the different uh, strategies. Uh, in terms of the natural hedging, uh, hedging through partial hedging, uh, four objectives of different hedging strategies. And you can see uh, what is the structural hedging program, what needs to be done in order to put the robust hedging program in place. And um, also I'm mentioning the pipeline hedging program, although I want to uh, to spend the separate uh, one hour or two going through the practical aspects of the pipeline hedging in the next video. I will share with you detail how to join this video. And um, the next chapter with uh, chapter four is also showing the behavioral aspect of the balance sheet, uh, uh, such as uh, what is the significance and impact of behavioral issues in the banking book. I'm also showing the reason for modeling of current account, savings account, the impact of early redemption of fixed rate asset on the interest rate risk. Uh, basic approaches for the modeling of NMDs, basic approaches for the modeling of the statistical prepayment, and also some consideration of the model risk. In the chapter five, I wanted to uh, highlight the importance of the proactive management of the interest rate risk. So again, we will be looking at the problem through the treasure eyes. So I will show you how I am taking the decision when I manage the balance sheet, uh, what is in my view on the active treasury management, what is the directional gap on the short end of the curve, what is should be the when I think I should close totally the exposure on the medium end of the curve and uh, to which extent I'm happy to keep the time bucket sensitivity when I think it should be totally closed and also the implication on the hedge accounting because you shouldn't be looking at the hedging strategy in isolation without taking into account the importance of the hedge accounting techniques and models. So I'm going through the three hedge accounting models, which is cash flow hedging and fair value hedging, fair value hedging on the IFS 9 and on the ES 39 and when we should be using the, um, the models, this particular methodologies um, in different hedging strategies. 
So we know that we need to hedge account to have hedge accounting in place in order to uh, avoid any penal impact which is coming from hedging strategies. So these two, so hedge accounting and hedging strategies from treasury side are interrelated and they have to be uh, taken into account by treasury in his her daily management. So when you calibrate hedges, when you decide what kind of frequency you are going to uh, to go with in your hedging activity. This is fundamental that you know also the hedge accounting implication. So another topic which is there uh, is, 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 is this interrelation. Chapter six is covering the IRBB stress test and ICAP. We know that regulatory requirements are quite uh, mm, quite vocal in terms of robust interest rate risk uh, um, stress testing framework in a bank. This is because of the importance of this risk. This is because of the impact on the uh, capital allocation. We know that uh, regulator wants to the multi-dimensional uh, perspective. So regulator wants to see uh, what is the impact uh, under uh, major subcategories of this inter, uh, of IRBB. So what is the exposure coming from basis risk? What is the exposure coming from repricing risk? And also the uh, additional aspects such as behavioral aspects, automatic options and uh, shocks, uh, stress tests uh, and shocks. So different uh, magnitude, different shapes of the curve, and this is all part of, uh, of the robust stress testing framework, which is described in the chapter six. And then we have chapter seven. Uh, chapter seven is the practical example. As I said, I wanted to uh, show as much as possible the practical aspects of the uh, management of this risk. So uh, in this perspective, I would, see, I would say that this book is uh, different from the books which you will find in the market uh, because I wanted to spend as, um, as much time as possible on solving the practical case studies. So this book is full of practical case studies and you will see uh, because this, is, this was my intention exactly. I want to be as much as, uh, as uh, helpful as possible and to share my experience. And uh, this book is a reflection of this. Um, you have also the example of the IRBB policy uh, aligned with the requirements of the Basel standards, which is there. And first of all, I would like to say that you have in the appendix two example of the IRBB model annual and you have also the uh, simplified version of the interest rate risk model uh, which should be uh, provided together with the book in Excel. So you will get this IRBB uh, calculator when you see the calculation for the NII sensitivity, for EVE uh, calculation and different shocks. Uh, obviously, this model needs to be uh, calibrated for your own institution and needs to reflect the uh, regulatory requirement, local regulatory requirement for every single geographical location. Uh, but yeah, this is something which uh, I wanted to share with you. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. And uh, as I said, uh, you can uh, see very soon the details which I will share regarding to the Pipeline Hedging Program webinar, which I'm going to launch very soon. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day.